You know I am a big sucker for any fabric or quilt that represents the sea or fish or anything fun and tropical. This one is unbelievably easy. I've got all the steps for you. Are you ready? Let's get stitching. Well, well, welcome back everybody. That is right. My name is Rob Appel right here at So Well from Stitch in Heaven on YouTube and I'm so blessed to see everybody on the other side of the camera. How are you all doing today? This is another super fun and can you believe it? How beautiful is this quilt, right? And I love really fun plays on patchwork. These represent some beautiful fish in batik and I'm going to walk you through how to make this quilt. Even better, we have it all in kit format, and I haven't started anything today, folks. It's so easy. I thought, eh, let's not do prep work, because I know a lot of you love to travel. I know you like to go on our cruises. You like to come to our retreats, and so projects like this are super great because you can grab them, dive right in, very simple math. You have everything you need. So let's do that today. We're gonna open up our kit now. Before I get too excited and race away, this kit, the one I'm gonna use right here, will be available to one of you lucky viewers. At the end of the video, I'll give you more information on how you can win. Make sure you are subscribed. Make sure you are commenting day, today especially. That'll be one of the keys to your future of possibly holding the unbelievable kit. And that's what I keep saying. Unbelievable. that's what it is. Now, this is really fun. When you sign up for the Stitch in Heaven email, you get this wonderful book newsletter pamphlet called Quilters of the Caribbean. Now, Quilters of the Caribbean is a really fun series of stories, history of where we travel to on some of these beautiful cruises we go on, and also recipes that we have found as we travel along. So this is super great. I love this idea because I love to cook, I love to quilt, I love to travel, so it's all in one. All of this information is free to all of you. All you need to do is sign up for the Stitch in Heaven email, and this will be sent to you as a PDF. Now, today we're working on, like I said, unbelievable. The recipe is for a wonderful red snapper dish that I have to try one of these days. Where did it go? And it's near the back of the project, uh, the back of the pamphlet, I should say. And then here are our instructions, uh, very easy to follow along. So you might already have these downloaded yourself if you want to follow along today. If not, you can just sign up for that email, or of course you can purchase the kit. Now, the fabrics come pre-packaged, just like you see. So I've got some medium dark fabrics. I've got some medium fabrics. I've got dark fabrics. I've got this for all of my lights, and then the rest is our binding and our borders. And sorry about the plastic, I know it's real shiny that way, but because the lucky winner will get this kit with only one of the fish pre-constructed for you, you'll get to do all the rest yourself. I don't want to take too much of the fun away, and I want to keep it tidy for your packaging. Let's talk about where these fabrics are located within our block. I'm gonna keep referring to this one right here in the center, this dark purple fish, because I think it's pretty easy to see on camera, especially in contrast. Now, you'll see everything kind of heading in long diagonal rows here on the end construction, but this fish here we can look at as a square on point. Okay, so these are our light fabrics. This is the water that shows up in our background here, folks. And if you look real careful, they're just constructed by half square triangles. And I'm gonna teach you how to do those here in just a second for this particular project. Now, these are what we're referring to as our dark fabrics. So those will be cut from this package. And then these are our medium dark fabrics and then our medium right there in the center for kind of the fun center of our fish. And then you will also build the same fish using those same combinations of fabrics, basically uh, three different times. So here it is, that same purple fish, one, two, three. So we've got the purple and the green and the yellow, the red, the orange, and the blue. So you've got the six different fish and you can kind of see how that's all been organized. Now, of course, you can mix your combinations around, but I think keeping each fish in a color family makes it easier to see and helps us read this lightest color as our background. So for that matter, let's go ahead and, and make the purple fish. Um, you know what? That's not fair. I don't want to unpack uh, for everybody. We're going to make the dark blue fish because it seems to be on top-ish. So to the lucky winner, I now apologize. I'm making a mess out of your quilt kit, but you will forgive me, I'm sure. 
Okay, so I'm gonna need that. And then I'm gonna need from my mediums. Okay, and even though I've mostly destroyed the beautiful packaging, gosh, and aren't these batiks just gorgeous anyways? Um, I'm going to keep the stacks on their bags, but what I recommend you do is you take out each color grouping because there's gonna be different sizes required that you're gonna cut, two different sizes. And so that way you cut all your medium fabrics and then cut all of your dark medium fabrics and then cut all of your dark fabrics. I'm gonna keep them kind of with their names for the moment so that I can keep track of what we need to do. Okay, so for our darkest fabric, that's gonna be shown here and here. I'm gonna, oh, excuse me, here and here, I need two different size cuts, folks. So let's go ahead, I think I'm just gonna set this out of the way. I can do this basically just by looking at the quilt. Let's see if I can do it without referring back to the pattern. This, will, this is going to get wild. I knew it. I knew it. Okay. So now what we're dealing with, I'm just double checking. I've got a nice fold on my fabric and that's the side I really like to cut from. Okay. So now I'm looking, the first cut I'm going to make is a four and seven eighths. So that's almost up to the five. Utilizing this ruler, it's got two different size counts, and then it's actually just one line back. Some of you will actually find that just cutting this at five and trimming it might be the most successful, but there we are. We're at four and seven eighths. And I'm gonna just trim. Nice cut there. And then the next size we're gonna need, and these are the only two sizes we need in the entire project. The next one will be four and a half. And I think you know, if you know half square triangle math, you know exactly where we're heading uh, within this conversation. So just counting over, making sure I've got the correct lines on my ruler here. And I'm gonna spin it because that makes it so much easier when I use that half mark like that. I really like that. Okay, so there's my four and a half. And another trick I'd like to point out real quick, hopefully you notice, but I actually always try to cut my biggest cuts first. In case I make any sort of mistake, that big cut can often be trimmed down into smaller cuts. So I cut the four and seven eighths as a reminder, and then I cut the four and a half. Okay, set the rest aside here. And then of our four and a half, so let's see, we can just do it together. Of our dark, I need one, two per fish. So let's just start down over here and we're gonna make squares, folks. Okay, so now coming right back over where I had that same marking on my ruler to get two four and a half inch squares. I don't want to take any of the fun away. So when you get this kit, folks, make sure you know which size you're cutting before you do. Okay, so there's my four and a halfs, and now we're going to need some four and seven eighths. So if you've got one of these double sided rulers, always a good idea to spin it. I find the five, slide it back one eighth, that little teeny line. And then we're gonna go ahead and cut those. Okay, but from the seven eighths is where we get the half square triangles, but I need one, two, that's gonna come from one group of squares, three, four, that comes from the second group of squares. So again, I needed two of those darks just like that. So far, smooth sailing. Let's go on to our dark mediums now. Let's keep those together. Okay, so for the dark mediums, right, we just need one, two per fish. So that is gonna be the four and a half. Those are just solids, so four and a halfs. Okay, and so I've got a nice little strip here. Okay, so again, we have now two of our four and a half inch by four and a half inch squares of our dark medium. Okay, super simple. And I'm gonna stack these for you. Whoever gets a kit, I'm gonna stack these in order for us. Okay. And then now I'm going on to my medium. And the medium is just one of those right there. Okay, so, and that'll be another four and a half. Let's go ahead and make that cut real quick. Now you need enough for three, of course, so you'll still be making extra cuts. So I'm gonna cut you an extra square now, lucky winner. <laughs> Sounds like I got a flat tire on my rotary cutter, doesn't it? Something's going on and I know what it is. I don't want to talk about it yet. It's a brand new sharp blade. I was testing something out here. Um, 
And so at any rate, please do not be concerned. My rotary cutter is perfectly safe, perfectly sharp, easy to handle. I'm not at risk, uh, but I have something funny going on with it. And I think it's hilarious because it does. It sounds like I've got a flat tire. When I used to skateboard a lot, I used to get uh, flat spots on my wheels from doing power slides. And so that's what it sounds like to me is I've got a flat spot on one of my wheels right now. Pop, 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 pop. Anyways, okay. So again, that is that four and a half inch. That is our medium. Okay, and so then I need one, two, three, four, or two squares worth from my light. And those are those half square triangles. So again, using quilters math, we're going up to four and seven eighths. Okay. Now, again, this is the light fabric that's used for all of our background. So you'll be cutting lots of strips. So I'm just gonna cut off of one end here for us. We can share, we can play nicely together for sure. That's a four and seven eighths inch cut. So there's my five, there's that seven eighths mark. And this is your light fabric. One of the things I really find important in quilt making for those patchworks is to get our high contrast, right, in our patchworks. That's one of the things I really like is high contrast quilts. And so with that being said, that's why I like the softness of this light against even the blues of our darks. Okay, so now we're doing that seven eighths again. Perfect. So we've got another strip cut for you there of the lights. Now we're gonna to wanna to pair these up, right sides together, but we are using batik, folks. Not all batiks are technically universal sided, especially something like this that may have a bit of a print to it. So I'm looking at my stars, I'm seeing, see this star right here, it's more saturated. It looks like it doesn't have little holes in it. Watch, I'm gonna flip it right over. See the little holes in there like that? Well, those are actually, that means that's the back from the, the wax was put on this side. So I'm gonna choose this as my right side. I'm gonna choose this as my right side. It's really not all that terribly crucial, but it's just nice to pay attention if you can. Now we're gonna go ahead and what color pencil do I have today? I've got white. Okay, so we're gonna mark <laughs> the wrong sides of our dark pieces. It's that easy, it really is. Had I had dark pencil, I would have marked the light fabric, right? Okay. Let's just go ahead and use our ruler. And I like to just kind of do like a sketching motion. So I'm not pulling at the fabric, makes a nice solid line. And that line today is gonna be a guideline for us versus a uh, stitch line. So this is just gonna be where we sew quarter inches off of either side. Okay, so now we're going right sides together where I can see that line heading into my quarter inch seam allowance. And here we go. Just changed my bobbins. I'm praying that it uh, picked up there. Probably should check on this stuff before I do these for you folks. And then what I like to do also here is I'm just gonna go ahead and bring my needle into the up position and bring my foot in the up position. And now I'm just gonna swing that fabric around and I'm gonna drop the presser foot on the other side using that chalk right on my guideline. And I'm also now sewing a quarter inch as we go. Cross there. So we're gonna do that for both of them. We're gonna need that. And again, two per color per fish. So I guess six total. Oop. Just nice little feed right in there. And you can chain pieces, of course, because you'll be working on several fish at once. I just wanted to show you one today. I didn't want to cut into the whole kit. Okay, now I'm going to come on out. Let's just go ahead and cut thread at this point. Use the thread cutter on the machine. And I still have one more little row of stitching. No problem there. So I'm just going to stitch that. Again, edge of the foot on the chalk, quarter inch from the chalk. Okay, so now if we have both of these prepared, um, I'm gonna go ahead and just separate them. Use a ruler just to protect your hand. These don't have to be super accurate, but it is nice to make sure you don't cut through your threads. If you're a slotted trimmer fan, you wanna trim these to four and a half now. If you're a block lock fan, you wanna press it open. If you're like me and you can't find either tool at the moment, you're in a bit of a panic state, so you're just gonna go ahead and press to the light side. Excuse me, 
What am I saying? I completely lost my mind. Press to the dark side. Folks, I want you to press to the dark side. <laughs> What has gotten into me today? Maybe we should just do a whole do-over. When I realized I didn't have my slotted trimmer, that's my favorite. I love the slotted trimmer for making half square triangles now. Such a super cool tool. And I've got other videos out there. Maybe I'll even link one to the back of today's video for you. If you haven't seen them, they're awesome. Um, and that's what I was in a panic. I couldn't find mine. But so either way, we just want our seams to nest together nicely. And you can achieve that by pressing all of the fabrics to the same direction in these projects. And with the wool mat, I can just kind of leave it there, let the iron do its job, which I also think is pretty terrific. Okay, so I'm gonna need those. It's always a good idea for accuracy, especially something like this where we're getting these crisp points, right? Is we wanna go ahead and trim these down. We're looking for four and a halfs because all of our other squares are four and a half. So if you don't have your slotted trimmer and you don't have your um, block lock, what you could do be like lost in the woods without the right tools is you can use the diagonal, the 40, see 45 degree marker right there. You can use that. And what you're going to first do is you're going to line that up right along the seam you just created. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come here and I'm just going to shave. Just to shave, take those dog ears off and everything. Not too much. Okay. And then when you rotate it, and I need to find the proper side here using this 45 that has my half inch marks. You see I'm laying in there right at that four and a half and four and a half there on that diagonal. And then we're going to trim off that dog ear there. Perfect. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and do that to these and I'll be right back. And of course, this is where the Martelli mat always comes in handy as well for spinning those things around and trimming them off real clean. And that's about all the cutting work we still need to do, folks. So let me go ahead and get ourselves ready. Now, as we're doing these here, we're gonna think kind of in the three by three fashion, okay? So what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna take a dark and a dark. You see them? on point, okay? And then you had your medium on point that lays right between them. Are you following me? Okay, I think this is gonna work pretty cool. So then from there, right from the head of the fish, we need our two dark mediums, okay? Just like that. And now we want our water to be forming on the outside of the fish with our point, with our point like this, pointing away from the center four patch. Here's our center four patch. And we want our tip, you see, just like that, pointing away. So now construction becomes really easy, but I like to sew my half square triangles together first. So let's grab these, lay them right sides together and match up those tips up there. And we're going to sew them on the dark edges. And we can do the next one at the same time. Just don't forget where you're stitching on the dark edges to create that tip, that point. And that first one I over trimmed a little bit. I don't know if you caught me doing that. I figured you did. And so I've just kind of split the difference here on my triangle knowing that quilting math is a bit forgiving. And if not, it'll quilt out. So they say anyways. Okay, so we're gonna trim those. Now, if you're like my good friend Tiffany Hayes, you would probably press these open. Um, but for myself, I'm just gonna press to one side today. I'm not developing a ton of bulk in this project. You can see almost everything else is gonna just be a straight flat seam. So we're not too worried about bulk here today. And you can see here on the one I needed to cheat, the point's great. I've got a little work to do down here. So let's go ahead and build the, um, the four patch as we need. So I'm gonna do this, paying attention, that's my seam right here, quarter inch. Coming here, paying attention, that's my seam, quarter inch.
And one of these I'm gonna to have to commit to. So let's just do this right here. Lay that over there and go quarter inch. Hit that thread gutter. Trim them out, press them, and then we just gotta make sure after we press them, we get them back into the right orientation. Which should be fairly simple because we had that lightest of our mediums in the middle. Pressing here away from the water or the light fabric. Okay, and I believe that goes about like that and like that and like that. Okay, did we get it? Double check, double check. Looked great. So, okay, now what I want to do is I'm going to take care of this seam where things got a little wobbly. And what I'm doing is I'm trusting. I'm going to line it up, actually looking more at this top edge. Okay, and as I come in here, you can see that I'm going to just barely catch the half square triangle piece, but it's still within my quarter inch. So that was what I was trusting that whole time. Easy peasy, and I also just matched up that center seam. This part, the both of the edges matched up, that was easy. Okay, so we're gonna press that one. Unbelievably impressive, I would say. <laughs> That's bad dad jokes, I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay, and now, Let's not stitch ourselves into a corner, folks. We have to join these two before we can join that, right? Okay, double checking that I have that there, right? But I didn't, uh -oh, what did I, what, what have I done? <laughs> I think I stitched it to the wrong side. Nope, I got carried away. I got excited. Let's make sure we're doing this correct. There we go, flop them over. Go ahead and stitch them together. Boy, close call there. Even the simple ones can get reorientated and that's why a design wall and double checking is so important, folks. Okay, now that that center is built, we can put on that top row and we will have ourselves one good looking fish ready for the red snapper fry, okay? Flip that over, match up those seams while you're doing your quarter inch. I told you that was unbelievably easy and a super cool fish block, right? So check this out, folks. I wanna walk you through or talk you through a little bit of the final construction idea and the quilting here. So bear with me a second before I tell you how you can win this kit for yourself. But as a reminder, this block is what we call on point, right? But this is your straight edge. So in your construction, you're going to build rows. One, two, three, four, five fish in this row. Three fish in this row. It's like a pyramid. One fish in this row. And what these are, are big chunks, big triangles that the pattern will tell you the size you need to cut for. And I just don't remember at the moment, so I'm not going to say it wrong. But this big fill in, so as you come down your rows, you can put your blocks in the row, put on your triangle and your triangle, and then it will fit into the next row. So you've got this big long center row here, and then your three and your singles, and then it's another border print that goes around or the print goes around the border. For machine quilting, this one was done on a long arm with a panograph, just some really fun kind of swirly motion which brings out the body of the life of the fish and all of that as well. So I really think it's appropriate, super fun. And again, I just love this use of batiks. It really plays with the tropical feel of the fabrics and the theme of the quilt. 
I love seeing what we can do with very basic patchwork squares and triangles, and I love giving quilt kits away. So if you would like to win this, I'll give you a couple of chances this time around. We're gonna have a whole month to do so. I'll have the end date down below, but all you need to do is comment win in the comments below on this video. That's right, comment win, and you could win a chance to it have this quilt kit sent to you free of charge and then you can make it on your own. If you don't win, we've got plenty available for you. The link is in the description and I so appreciate you all being here for yet another wonderfully fun tropical tutorial. Make sure you sign up for the email so you can get your Quilters of the Caribbean book, recipes, stories, and all the wonderful travel guide that's available to you. And until next time, folks, please stay well. Thanks again for being here. I just love seeing you. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of the video. It really helps support our channel. If you haven't subscribed, do so now. Hit the little button to be notified every time we go live or do a new video for all of you. And here's one from the past I think you'll really enjoy.